first hack is something that all students are going to be familiar with. You're going to think you're above this. You're going to think this hack will not apply to you. It will not work to you. You know, you're way better than this. But trust me when I say this hack will literally apply to everyone and you're not doing it. You're not using this hack. You're not making it to your best advantage. So it's called Parkinson's law. So first I'll tell you a situation that pretty much all students are familiar with. So let's say you've got an assignment due in 30 days. How do most students approach that assignment? Do they go, okay, I'm gonna spend the next 30 days working on the assignment a little bit every day. No, students don't do that. If the assignment's due in 30 days, for like 25 days, 26 days, they're gonna do nothing. They're just gonna chill, relax. They're gonna be like, oh man, yeah. I've still got three weeks to do that assignment, no problem. Or I've still got two weeks to do that assignment, no problem. Or I've still got one week to do that assignment, no problem I'll go out tonight and then there's three days left to do the assignment suddenly they're gonna do six hours a day of the assignment suddenly they're gonna do all-nighters so a 30-day assignment an assignment that was given 30 days took them three days but they did it at the end of the 30 days right so if that same assignment was due in one week they would complete it so what does this mean this is called Parkinson's law. Basically, the amount of time you allocate to a task, to an assignment, it will take you that long to complete the task. If you give yourself 30 days to do an assignment, it'll take you 30 days to complete it. If you give yourself one week, it will get, take one week to complete it, right? Like for example, if you gave yourself 20 minutes to eat a meal, it would take you 20 minutes. But if you knew you had to eat that meal in five minutes, you would like boom, boom, eat it down, right? So how do you use Parkinson's law as a hack to get more work done, to work faster, to work more efficiently, to get more done in less time? Basically, you wanna create artificial deadlines. You're gonna wanna skip this because you're gonna think this is useless, this is boring. Why would you do, waste your time with this? But Trust me when I say this is essential. This will keep you on track and help you achieve the exact same task in so much more less time and work more efficiently. So what do you do? Well, first of all, you wanna take your deadlines. Say you have an exam due in a month or an assignment due in a month. You wanna break that down into weekly deadlines and then daily deadlines. And I'll give you some bonus tips on this as well um, in a second. So let's say, I'll give you an example. Let's say you have four questions on your coding assignment due in one month. So what you can do is you can say, okay, in the first week I'll do question one, second week I'll do question two, third week I'll do question three, and fourth week I'll do question four, right? So you break it down into weekly targets. And, and write this down, by the way, open your planner and literally write this down. Don't just think about it, write down exactly what you're gonna do every week. And then take those weekly tasks and break them down into daily target objectives. So estimate how much time it's gonna take you that week to do that that deadline for example you're doing one question over the next week allocate like an hour every day to work on that question and write it down say okay monday i'll do this for 90 minutes tuesday i'll do this for 90 minutes Wednesday, I'll do this for 90 minutes, et cetera, et cetera. You know, it's gonna take you like 15 minutes, 20 minutes to break down the assignment. Might even take you an hour to break down the assignment into these daily objectives. But trust me when I say you will save hours over the course of the whole assignment if you simply take time to plan, right? and break it down into artificial deadlines. This is a quote I heard. Basically, I think it goes something like 15 minutes of planning saves you one hour in execution. Basically, time invested into planning will save you much, much more time in the long run. So it's worth it spending 30 minutes, an hour per assignment to break it down into these daily deadlines, right? And a bonus tip on this. So let's say you're sitting down to do that one hour that you've planned for Monday, for example. What you can do is you can put a timer. I know on your computer and like on Windows, you can put a timer on the top of your screen for example, a timer for 90 minutes and it will just keep you on track. Like you're seeing that time and you're like, okay, I got 60 minutes left to do this. I've got 20 minutes left to do this and it will keep you, it'll give you that sense of like rush, like you gotta get this done. Now here's the thing, you might not hit your estimated objectives exactly. You might do too little, right? But that's fine because even if you do too little and you don't hit your objective, you are still gonna get way more done than if you didn't set these artificial deadlines, right? So Parkinson's law is real. You're gonna think you're above it. You're gonna think deadlines don't apply to you, but Parkinson's law is real. So tip number one, hack number one is create artificial deadlines and literally write it down on your planner. I use Notion, literally write it down on Notion. Monday, blah, 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 Tuesday, blah, blah, blah. For your exams, for your assignments, for everything, okay? That's the first hack. Hack number two, there's this concept called the 80-20 principle, and I'll teach you how this applies to subjects in a sec. Basically, the 80-20 principle says 80% of your results in anything come from 20% of your efforts, right? So for example, in a garden, 80% of tomatoes 
come from 20% of the plants. So in a subject, 80% of your grade, 80% of the possible results will come from 20% of the subject. Now this might sound crazy, this might not sound true, and it might not be exactly 80-20, but let me explain to you how this works. I'll, I'll give you an example. So a couple years ago, I did this, this subject called declarative programming, right? And basically for the exam, the exam was a coding exam, right? It was 100% coding, just writing code. But the last six weeks of the subject were not coding. The last six weeks of the subject were purely theory. So when I was going to revise the exam, I was like, okay, wait a minute. The final exam is coding, but these six weeks are not coding. Therefore, they cannot be examined right you know I used a bit of thinking I thought it through and I was like okay I'm just gonna skip studying these last six weeks right so I didn't even study those last six weeks at all but all the other students in my class were you know going hard studying those last six weeks which were hard by the way they were hard that was hard the hardest material of the course and what do you know the last six weeks did not appear on the exam and I ended up doing better than all the students in my class most of them I'm not, I'm not trying to flex or anything but I'm, I'm just saying that I did so much less work than them and I still did better on them, better than them. Why? Because I use this 80-20 principle. So basically, this is hard to explain exactly how to do it. You need to use a bit of your thinking, a bit of your critical thinking. But basically, you have to realize that what they teach you, not all of it can be examined, right? So for example, in mathematical subjects, they might give you a lot of these like really detailed proofs when in reality, you don't really need to know them. Or for example, the, often the f like last week of a subject is not examinable. Or for example, there are many parts of the lecture slides that are purely for curiosity and cannot actually be examined. But how do most students approach studying? They'll go to page one in the textbook and they'll read every single line and they'll memorize every single line. The problem with that is a lot of it is not examinable. So what you need to do, this is going to take practice, but you need to like learn which parts of the subject can actually be examined. Some parts of the subject can only be examined on the exam. Other parts can only be examined uh, on assignments. So, you know, use your brain, use the syllabus. The syllabus can help you a lot. Uh, another thing you can do is use past papers and past assignments. When you look at a past paper, you can tell exactly what's going to be examined. So you can see which topics are appearing more often. Some topics will always be on a final exam. So that's a, t a topic that you should focus on a lot. And some topics might not even be on the final exam. Like often the first week of the subject is not on the final exam because it's like base material or whatever. Now, this is a bit of a harder hack to explain. You have to use a bit of thinking, but yeah, basically there are certain parts of the subject that will be weighted more in the assignments and exam. And there are certain parts of the subject that will be almost non-examinable. Um, so yeah, this is like a skill that you have to develop on your own. Uh, use your knowledge, use your skills. 80-20 principle. Okay, and the final hack I can give you, I learned this from the book, The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss, but it applies very much to university and high school subjects. Basically, it's called deciding your priority task. So in any subject, there is gonna be a task that will give you the highest leverage, the highest amount of results for the smallest amount of effort. So let me give you an example. Many students waste so much time. Like I've seen students waste literally hours printing out the lecture notes, wasting hours learning lecture one. So, okay, let's say you're sitting down to study for an exam, right? What is the highest leverage task you can do? Well, the best task you can do to study for an exam is to do past papers right because past papers are literally training what you're going to be doing but what do most students do they'll start on lecture one and they'll write notes for lecture one then they'll write notes for lecture two and lecture three and lecture four all the way till the end and then they've only got like a day to do past papers. So what should you do? You should start with the past papers. Use the past paper as a guide to teach you what to study. So you go to question one on the past paper and it's and it's about like, I don't know, uh, mathematical induction. Then you go study mathematical induction. Then you come back to that question, right? So here's how you find the priority task in your subject. If you only had two hours a week to work on this subject, what would you do? Well, if you had two hours a week to work on your subject, would you spend those two hours printing past papers? Probably not. Would you spend those two hours highlighting the textbook? Probably not. Would you spend those two hours doing textbook questions? Probably not. Maybe. You'd probably do exam questions, right? If you had two hours a week, would you do exam questions? Would you work on the assignments? Probably, right? So there's your priority task. That's what you should focus on. When you're most alert, when you're most concentrated, do those priority tasks. Start with those. Use those as like the center, the foundation of your study and put everything else around it. Like when I approach studying for an exam, I start with the past papers. I use it as like a guide to teach me where to study, where to put my efforts. And related to hack two, certain parts of the course will be worth more. So most students, they'll start on lecture one, but they'll already know lecture one pretty well. So it's better to start on the like hardest lectures, the weeks that you know the worst, right? So that's hack to find your priority task and focus on that. Use 
use the parts of the day where you're most concentrated on your priority task because that's going to give you the best leverage the best results for the least amount of effort so hope these hacks helped let me know if you relate to any of these let me know if you're going to use any of these see you later